Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. A short while ago I made a video about how the hell human ships hover. You guys seem to like it, and one of the most resounding questions I got in the comment section was asking me to explain how human ships have artificial gravity without the use of rotating sections, so between that and the demands of some of my Discordians, I've agreed to do so. Again, if you were not aware, I do have a Discord, I'm on it frequently, and you can interact with me and other like-minded intellectual Halo lore fanatics by just clicking the link in the video description. I look forward to seeing you in the domain. My Discord, I mean, that's what I call it, the domain. You know, you, you know, it's a knowledge repository. You get it, it's fine. Let's move on. So let's take a look at the UNSC artificial gravity technology. Before we get started, I want to clarify that I am actually offering up ways that the UNSC could have anti-gravity technology, but still remain within the boundaries of the law, while also applying known and theoretical scientific principles to justify my reasoning, as well as addressing outstanding issues with how the suggested technology would and should work. This video is going to contain some aspects of cutting-edge science, but I'll try to keep it the, the jargon to a minimum. If you like these kind of nerdy and intellectual conversations, I suggest you do pop over to the Installation 00 Discord, where you can have a chat with me and the other Discordians who like their law pure and undiluted. The principal argument I made with the graphitic technology being used for human ships to hover was made in reference to Grav Ball, which is a child's game that John was banned from playing in school because he always won. A gravity ball is skimmed across a repulsor court and generally speaking technology is only applied to fields such as children's toys if it is A. available to the public, B. relatively affordable and C. a well established and safe technology. Considering that the anti-gravity plate is a small form of anti-gravity technology developed by the UNSC, and that as of 2531 they were considered old technology and they were never widespread, this gives rather obvious suggestion that this is the origin for hovering human ships up to a certain tonnage. In simple terms, if the UNSC had managed to create an old technology that could create anti-gravity fields, it is simply an intrinsic property of understanding of how to create anti-gravity that they'd also have a solid grasp on how to create artificial gravity as well. Again, if we look at the law, we find that the anti-gravity plates have been used in repulsor courts for grav ball, but also during a very particular engagement with insurrectionists in the Ghosts of Onyx. These plates were designed to be attached to other objects, thereby enabling them to float off the ground, as is the case with ships. However, a grav plate was used in one instance by insurrectionists to incapacitate a group of Spartan twos, blue team to be specific, by simulating the force of 10 Gs of gravity which caused their Mjolnir armor's compensatory mechanisms to drastically increase the internal pressure of the suits. Anti-gravity plates wouldn't be able to create a force of 10 Gs. Anti-gravity plates, by their very definition, would only be capable of producing a gravitic repulsion force. So this leads me to believe that a more accurate description for these devices should simply be grav plates. If the UNSC know, understand, and can create the principles of anti-gravity, then they must also know, understand, and create the principles of gravity, as they are directly related and proportional to each other. So if they had made technology devices capable of producing anti-gravity fields, these same devices should also be reversible and be able to produce gravity fields. Then, these plate-like devices need simply be fitted under the walking surface of the deck plates of any UNSC ship. But what are the potential mechanisms behind generating artificial gravity? Well, currently three of the four fundamental forces in the universe have been quantized. This means that of the four fundamental forces, being gravitation, electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force, all but gravitation has corresponding principles in quantum mechanics. It is suspected by physicists that gravity could be quantized by the discovery of the currently undiscovered fundamental particle, the graviton. The graviton is a hypothetical quantum of gravity, an elementary particle that mediates the force of gravity. There is no complete quantum field theory of gravitons due to an outstanding mathematical problem with the renormalization in general relativity. In string theory, believed to be a consistent theory of quantum gravity, the graviton is a massless state of a fundamental string. If it exists, the graviton is expected to be massless because the gravitational force is very long range and appears to propagate at the speed of light. The graviton must be a spin 2 boson because the source of gravitation is the stress energy tensor, a second order tensor. Additionally, it can be shown that any spin 2 field would give rise to a force indistinguishable from gravitation because a massless spin 2 field would couple to the stress energy tensor in the same way that gravitational interactions do. 
this result suggests that if a massless spin-2 particle is discovered, it must be the graviton. There are theories emerging that could rectify the mathematical issues of renormalization and its seeming incompatibility with general relativity in the forms of string theory and loop quantum gravity which has been gaining some momentum in recent years. Back to the Halo universe, it seems likely that these currently cutting edge scientific frontiers are discovered and confirmed by the 26th century and considered old news. What these discoveries would inevitably lead to is the understanding of the fundamental particle of gravity and the gravitational force as a whole. This would inevitably lead to immense breakthroughs in science and technology in the same way that electricity was unlocked and led to the internet and smartphones in our pockets through humanity's mastering of the electromagnetic force. Humanity in the 26th century would ultimately develop technology that emits, converts or creates gravitons at will likely by the conversion of one of the other fundamental forces. If you consider we can create light or photons by the conversion of electricity through a suitable medium, a similar process to create the graviton would be achieved by converting one, two or all of the fundamental forces thereby allowing humanity to create both artificial gravity and anti-gravity. But there are issues with this. If humanity have created deck plates for their ships that emit gravitons to create artificial gravity, then the gravitic gradient between the deck plate's surface and the ceiling would be immense. 1g of gravity would have to be generated by the plate, likely only an inch or so in thickness, meaning that the gravity would be at its highest at the surface of the plate and taper off rapidly the further from the source. This means that gravity at a person's feet would be significantly higher than that at their head, due to how gravity would propagate from the source. At the same time, there would be an attractive effect from the gravity plate in the deck above, meaning the person would experience a gravitational force at their feet pulling down, and a seemingly anti-gravitic effect pulling their heads up towards the ceiling. That is, unless humanity have been able to create gravity-generating plates that project gravitons unidirectionally, meaning that gravity is only felt on the upper surface, with no such effects taking place towards the sides or the undersurface. This would then cancel out the attractive effect towards the ceiling. But having ships that have high G at your feet tapering to 1G around your midsection and 0G at your head would be so disorientating it wouldn't even be functionally useful. This is of course assuming that under every deck plate is a gravity generating plate, so each deck has the same gravitic gradient. The alternative would be putting these gravitic generators towards the central line of the ships allowing gravity to propagate in all directions, but then gravity through each subsequent deck would be weaker than the one below, until there is either microgravity or no gravity at all towards the inner hull surface. And the gravity below the centre line would be inverted, meaning decks below the centre line would experience gravity upside down in relation to above the centre line. That is not what we observe in the law. An alternative to this again is that gravity generating plates are located in the belly of the ships allowing the gravity to propagate upwards while somehow being shielded so that gravity only propagates unidirectionally. This would mean that the gravity plates would need to generate gravity through the entire ship above it up to the upper surface, but again this would lead to a high gravity in the lower decks and next to no gravity in the upper decks with only decks somewhere between being comfortable to occupy. In theory this could explain why some UNSC ships have been described as having no gravity. It's not that the entire ship lacks gravity, but simply that the area in which the scenes were described were on the upper decks where the personnel are further from the source of the gravity generators, thereby meaning they experience microgravity or no gravity. This could definitely be the case for earlier UNSC ships, leading to the aforementioned described scenes and inconsistencies with gravity versus no gravity within human ships. But again, in other cases, we see that ships that appear to have consistent gravity throughout all decks. This could be because these ships were retrofitted after the Human Covenant War had started and technology gleaned from the Covenant allowed humanity a better understanding of how to circumnavigate the previous mentioned issues. One of these likely being that the graviton may be a particle, just like the photon, but also, just like the photon, simultaneously acts like a wave. If it acts like a wave, it can be overlaid with sympathetic wave frequencies which harmonise with the original wave, allowing constructive and destructive interference targeted at particular areas of the gravitational gradient to smooth out the sudden and aggressive gradient from the feet to the head, making the gravity feel more consistent across the length of the body. 
This innovative understanding of its wave function could then be implemented to grant artificial gravity to all ships with more consistency, with gravitic generating plates that emit unidirectionally but with attenuated sympathy frequencies under every single deck plate, allowing a smoothed gravitic field for every deck. The only other alternative to this I can think of is that the plates have always functioned omnidirectionally but generate gravity on the upper surface and anti-gravity on the lower surface which would go some way to cancel out the gravitic gradient from head to foot and that they were always fitted in most UNSC ships but they are maybe quite energy hungry and thus some captains prefer to turn the gravity generators off altogether in non-essential areas to allow more energy to be directed into combat operations. Aside from that, I'm open and willing to other ideas, or 343 to just put this particular aspect of the law to bed once and for all. If they could address that and the ship scale problem simultaneously, that'd be great. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons, Sotenshi, the silent cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Holden, Defiant Alpha 117 and Nathan, the holders of the mantle, Darian, Ty, Black Biscuit, J Rabbit, Austin, Brent and Kaiser, my reclaimers, Zack, Deep Cover, Verbal Statue, Spesigo, Spartan A498, Guppy, Josh, Mickey and Bastian, my Metox, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome and all of this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo Lord Discuss to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. And if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and will free up more of my time to point to this content and other Halo-related goodness. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.